Militant outfit NDFB signs tripartite suspension of operation agreement with Centre and Assam government. ISRO launches India's high power communication satellite GSAT 30 on board Ariane 5 rocket from French Guiana. Nagaland Assembly ratifies bill to extend SCs and STs reservation by another 10 years. <music> President Ramnath Kovind rejects mercy petition of one of the convicts in Nirbhaya gang rape case. And in ODI cricket, India set a target of 341 runs for Australia in the second One Day International, played at Rajkot. A very good evening, viewers, and welcome to the Northeast News Bulletin. This is Hangita Kakuti Patok, and now the stories in detail. In Assam, the militant outfit National Democratic Front of Boroland, under the leadership of B. Saurai Gra, signed a tripartite suspension of operation agreement with the Centre and the Assam government. President of the outfit, B. Saurai Gra, Joint Secretary Northeast of Home Ministry Saitrindra Gar and Assam Home Commissioner Ashutosh Agnihatri signed the agreement yesterday. The outfit has agreed to abjure violence, come over ground and to join the peace process. Assam Director General of Police Bhaskar Juti Mohanto welcomed the decision of the National Democratic Front of Boroland NDFB for returning to the mainstream abjuring violence. Addressing a press meet at Guwahati, Mohanto said that a group of 27 cadres under the leadership of the president of the outfit B. Sauraigra signed a tripartite agreement. He also congratulated Vice President of the outfit B. Bidai. The DGP made an appeal to all other extremist organizations to come back to the mainstream to create a peaceful atmosphere in the state President. and uh, right now Saragra had gone to Delhi and there was a suspension of operation signed by government of India government of Assam and NDRB anti-talk faction representatives yesterday and uh, their cadres now are with us as police and uh, we are keeping them in an undisclosed location and uh, we welcome the cadres the leaders uh, to join the peace process, we decided to join the peace process uh, and the uh, government of India is also um, uh, encouraged this particular process uh, and we welcome anybody else, whoever uh, from other factions also, if they desire to join the peace process, uh, we'll welcome them. India's high power communication satellite GSAT 30 was successfully launched on board Ariane 5 rocket from French Guiana early this morning. Indian Space Re Research Organization said the GSAT 30 is aimed at providing high quality television, telecommunication, and broadcasting services. The 3,357 kg GSAT 30 derives its heritage from ISRO's earlier INSAT Oblique GSAT satellite series and is equipped with 12C and 12 KU band transponders. GSAT 30 will serve as a replacement to the aging INSAT 4A spacecraft services with enhanced coverage. ISRO said the satellite will provide Indian mainland and the islands coverage in KU band and extended coverage in C band covering the Gulf countries and a large number of Asian countries as well as Australia. The Supreme Court today saw the response of the Centre on a Public Interest Litigation plea seeking implementation of its policy on gradually converting all public transport and government vehicles to electric vehicles to curb air pollution and carbon emission. A bench headed by Chief Justice S. A. Bobde took note of the plea filed by an NGO alleging that the government has not done enough to implement the policy. The bench, which also comprised Justices B. R. Gavai and Suryakant, issued notice to the Union Ministry of Road Transport and sought its reply within four weeks. Lawyer Prashant Bhushan, appearing for the NGO, said the scheme was formulated to curb air pollution and restrict carbon emission, which has been creating the problem of global warming. 
The Nagaland Assembly on Friday ratified the Constitution Amendment Bill 2019, which extends quotas for SCs and STs in Lok Sabha and state legislatures by another 10 years. A special one-day session of the Assembly was held to pass a resolution ratifying the bill cleared by both Houses of Parliament. Earlier addressing the House, Nagaland Governor Arun Ravi said that the state government has considered the early settlement of Naga political issue as its most important agenda and that settlement could be very close to it. He further said negotiations which were going on for many years has been successfully concluded. He appreciated the stakeholders for exhibiting utmost sincerity, foresightedness and a spirit of understanding in helping create a conducive atmosphere for conclusion of the talks in a positive manner. He called upon the Naga people to unite for an early settlement so that they do not miss the golden opportunity. The Tripura Assembly on Friday witnessed noisy scenes as opposition CPI MLAs created a ruckus in the House and boycotted the proceedings, seeking immediate withdrawal of a case of financial fraud against its senior leader and former PWD minister Badal Chaudhuri. As Governor Ramesh Bays took uh, to the dais to deliver his speech on the first day of the winter session, the CPI members led by officiating leader of the opposition, Tapan Chakraborty, rushed to the well of the house, claiming that Chaudhuri, arrested in October last year, was a victim of an intentional political attack. As Bayes continued his speech amid the din, the agitating legislators walked out of the assembly, contending that they were left with no other option. President Ramnath Kovind has rejected the mercy petition of one of the convicts in the Nirbhaya gang rape case. The Union Home Ministry had earlier forwarded the mercy petition of convict Mukesh Singh to the President, recommending its rejection. Mukesh, one of the four death row convicts in the 2012 Nirbhaya gang rape and murder case, had filed the mercy petition a few days ago. The Home Ministry had reiterated the recommendation of the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Anil Bajal, for its rejection, who had sent the mercy petition of Mukesh to the Ministry yesterday, a day after after the Delhi government recommended its rejection. Manipur Forest and Environment Minister Sham Kumar today said that the Forest Department and the Environment Directorate are taking various steps to conserve and protect the forest, wetlands and hills of the state. He further said that the departments are seeking high court intervention regarding cancellation of the land deeds, that is pattas, which were wrongly allotted earlier in reserved areas, government lands among others. Stating that as the blame for wrongdoings cannot be put on anyone, he said the departments have been collecting land deeds records which were allotted to the individuals without permission or clearance from the concerned departments as required under law. He said that as a solution, the departments are demanding cancellation of such deeds. In cricket, India has set a target of 341 runs for Australia in the second one-day international being played at Rajkot. India scored 340 runs for six wickets in the stipulated 50 overs. Openers Shikhar Dhawan scored 96 and Rohit Sharma 42, while KL Rahul made 80 runs. Skipper Virat Kohli was out for 78. Earlier, Australia won the toss and elected to field. Australia were 82 runs for two wickets in 15 overs when reports last came in. The visitors registered an emphatic win over the host by 10 wickets in the first ODI played in Mumbai on Tuesday and took a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. The third and final ODI will be played in Bengaluru on Sunday. In the Kelo India Youth Games in Guwahati, several medals were decided today in swimming events. Assam girl Shivangi Sharma won gold in 200-meter freestyle event in under-21. Karnataka boys Sambhav and Anish won gold and silver under-17 in 200-meter freestyle. Gujarat girl Kalyani Saxena clinched gold in 100-meter breaststroke in under-21 category. On the other hand, Tamil Nadu's Dhanush got gold in 100 meter breaststroke in other games haryana won two gold in boys wrestling in football assam girls entered the semi-finals in under 21 category maharashtra is leading the medals tally with 37 goals followed by haryana with 29 gold medals assam is in the 13th position with seven gold nine silver and 11 bronze medals Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh today formally inaugurated the 5th Manipur Statehood Day Women's Polo Tournament at Mapal Kangjebung, the oldest living polo ground in the world. Addressing the gathering, the Chief Minister said that the tournament is a tribute to Lord Marjing and our ancestors who gifted the world such a beautiful game. It is indeed a matter of pride that Manipur is a birthplace of modern polo, he added. 
Six teams, that is Great Britain, Argentina, United States of America, Egypt, Indian Polo Association and Manipur are participating in the tournament. The inaugural match was played between Great Britain and the Indian Polo Association. The Great Britain team thrashed the Indian Polo Association by 9-0. In Arunachal Pradesh, Biuram Waghe has been elected as the new president of BJP State Union for the term 2020-23. BJP National General Secretary and Election Observer Anil Jain announced his name and handed over the election certificate to Waghe in Itanagar today. Biuram Waghe is the sitting MLA from Pakke Kesang Assembly constituency. Anil Jain also announced the names for newly elected members to the BJP National Council. They include Tamit Pasang and R. Pertin. A friendly international football match between under-17 Bhutan women's and Assam women's team was held at Gusaigao in Assam today. The match was organized by Gusaigao District Sports Association. In the match, Bhutan women's team defeated Assam by 3-1 goals. The match was inaugurated by BTC Executive Member for Sports, Doneshwar Goyari. And before we wind up the bulletin, a recap of the headlines. Militant outfit NDFB signs tripartite suspension of operation agreement with the Centre and Assam government. ISRO launches India's high power communication satellite GSAT 30 on board Ariane 5 rocket from French Guyana. Nagaland Assembly ratifies bill to extend SCs and STs reservation by another 10 years. President Ramnath Kovind rejects mercy petition of one of the convicts in Nirbhaya gang rape case. And in ODI cricket, India set a target of 341 runs for Australia in the second one-day international played at Rajkot. And that brings us to the end of this evening's bulletin. Thank you for tuning in. Namaskar.